From the slowest downloads to the smoothest streams of cyberspace, welcome to the Kadawa Show. And here's your host, Arthur Kadawa. Welcome back to the Kadawa Show, everybody. Welcome back, you wonderful, sweet, soft, little, soft, you wonderful little people out there. Uh, thank you once again for all the support you give us at the Kadawa Show here. If you are watching, what was that? If you are watching this show because you want to take part in it, you want to be here, you want to be sitting next to me on that beautiful red, why am I looking that way? The studio's over there. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the red couch we have over there. Then please know that. Uh, send us a comment down below. We look out for channels and what we look for, we look out for channels, yes, of course we do. What we look for is for creative people that actually put some effort into their videos and their work and we know by looking that they're going to be around for a long time. We look for people that are going to be creating and working for a long time so we can form relationships with these people, uh, help to promote them, and uh, you know share their efforts with the world. So that's what we're looking for if you're wondering what does it take to get on the show. Now today we have a wonderful guest. <sighs> I need to find a new line, but I really like that line. A wonderful guest. It's right, right? I mean, it's good, right? Yes. See, he likes it. She likes it, too. She really likes it. Well, that's good. It's good for somebody. Okay, so, uh, yes, and this guest is known for his work in the media, such as writing, producing, directing, on-set work. So, guys, please welcome Jacob Cooney to the show tonight. And we'll be talking about a new movie. Yes, a new movie that's uh, being funded on Indiegogo. And they're looking for supporters. It's an 80s style movie. So we're going back in time. Back in time when we had fun movies out there with, you know, those adolescent type uh, life adventure stories. So do check that out. Make sure you watch that part of the show. You should be watching all of it. <laughs> so do make sure that you see that part of the show. All right, let's get to Jacob now. <gasps> Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Kadawa Show. Here we go. And he has worked. Another showman that's here tonight. He has worked in Elementary, the series, and seven other series as well. The Majestic and several other movies. He's been a, the casting manager for American Gladiators and Legally Blonde, the musical. He's been a director involved in seven different, uh, 11 different credits, some of which include Alpha House, Rehab for Rejects. Also, some shorts, which include Rocco, The Frolic, and the TV series Bedlam. He's been credited for writing for 10 different projects, producer for series, movies, and two shorts. So please welcome Jacob Cooney to the show tonight. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. Thank you for coming, Jacob. I hope the, that introduction was decent enough. Uh, I hope I can edit it to where it looks perfect. <laughs> that was great. Did I make any mistakes? <laughs> no, you're good, man. It was all good. Uh, let's see. You are located in Connecticut? Yes, uh, Greenwich, Connecticut. Greenwich. That sounds lovely. Is that a small town? Uh, it is. Um, it's a decent-sized town. I mean, it's not New York City or... Los Angeles, but it's definitely uh, it's a good sized town. It's pretty sprawling, a nice. lot of estates. Um, it's uh, it's an affluent neighborhood, but I live uh, in the in the uh, Byram area, kind of right by Port Chester, New York. Um, and it's a really nice kind of uh, Mayberry kind of street that I live on. So uh, you know, there's Ooh, a lot Mayberry. of kids running around, playing basketball, riding bikes, throwing balls. Um, it's, it's pretty, pretty low key and great for me as far as the writing goes. Cause sure. I, I don't really have anything that bothers me during the day. It, it, it almost sounds like a pleasant filled type, type situation with, uh, the street name and the city name. Yeah, it's, um, it is definitely very, uh, Pleasantville like, you know, just last weekend we had a, had a, uh, block wide, um, 
kind of a tag sale where multiple houses came together and did a mm-hmm. did a kind of a uh, a block garage sale and then we right. uh, all got together at the end of it and barbecued and hung out and um, uh. yeah it's just a really nice place to live how nice yeah well i'd definitely be attracted to live anywhere with the word green in it so <laughs> it just sounds so nice to me okay well let's jump into this um tell me how did you get started in production uh well i went to uh, i went to film school um, right out of high school at uh, Cal State Monterey Bay, uh, took the film program there, and that's uh, where I got the bulk of my uh, my education um, in film and television. Um, while going there, I also worked on uh, a ton of commercials that came to the area, um, a lot of student films. Um, if we weren't, you know, camping or at the beach, we were we were shooting a movie for all four years. So nice. Um, that's uh, that's that's how I how I uh, came to kind of learn the uh, the the craft, um, but it's something that I've always been um, interested in and directing specifically is what I've wanted to do uh, my entire life. So um, you know, I kind of took that dream and and uh, tried to make it a reality. Sure, definitely. Um, one of your first credited. Uh big projects actually i think it's the first one on imdb was your uh work in the majestic uh how did you get yes. that uh well they actually um shot the movie in my hometown oh in, uh, I see. ferndale california so um i knew that they were shooting um their first day of production was uh the first day i arrived for spring break my mm-hmm. freshman year of college um so i spent the entire day Hanging out, talking to the assistant directors, talking to the PAs, um, and uh, I struck a chord with one of the ADs. And by the end of the day, um, they pulled me on the set and hired me oh, to uh, to be a production assistant on the movie. And uh, it was kind of a surreal experience because they sure. they brought me on the set and uh, hired me in front of uh, Frank Darabont, the director, and Jim Carrey, and yeah. Martin Landau, and it was uh, pretty nuts, and, and I was standing about 500 feet from my house. So it was all <laughs> kind of just very insular and just surreal at the time. And, and sure. uh, you know, it was a really good experience. And, and um, you know, I started off my, my production career um, on, a, on a really, uh, in a really good way. Sure, definitely. I was going to say, it must have been you know, great working that close to Jim Carrey, but even better, Jim Carrey being that close to your own house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was really cool, really fun, and um, like I said, just a really great experience, and it just so happened to be in my hometown. Wow, excellent. How old were you at the time? 18, 19 years old. Wow, wow, that's great. What an experience. Definitely. Yeah, it was... It was, um, it was very just it was just really interesting it all kind of came for full circle yeah sure sure um all right well tell me what exactly do you do as a casting manager uh for example you were the casting manager of american gladiator what kind of responsibilities came with that uh with that one um we the casting directors would bring in um tons of uh tons of potential uh, people to be contestants and uh, also the actual gladiators. Um, so they would go through the whole casting process, and and throughout that, I was in charge of um, you know at the beginning of casting, it's all about organizing the paperwork and organizing the um, the testing that they have to go through. Um, and then as the people are kind of you know focused in on, and you get your finalists, um, then there's a whole uh, thing that takes place inside uh, or at hotels where they bring people in, fly them into LA, do the meet and greet, do the uh, network interviews, sure. um, and then from there it's my um, you know my job to basically run uh, that whole process mm-hmm. um, at the hotel and and keep the schedule and travel and all of that for everybody. Um, but yeah, that was something I did when I was uh, a little bit younger. Um, a couple years ago, probably five, six years ago, that was, that was what I was doing. Okay. I see. Yeah. That's before the Majestic? Uh, no, that was, that was after. 
That was after, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay. So moving up very nicely in uh, your career there. I have to say, great work on Rehab for Rejects. I enjoyed oh, watching that you. pilot. And that, that's something you produce, you've directed, you've written. That's completely your work, right? Correct. Yeah, I co-wrote it uh, and co-created it with um, a good buddy of mine and writing partner, uh, Matt Sagona. Okay. Um, that was, so we worked together on... Uh, Eli Stone. We were in the uh, in the production office for that, and we uh, we decided, hey, let's let's uh, let's get a project going. Let's do something ourselves. And uh, so we we put it together and uh, produced it, and um, I directed, and we co-wrote, and uh, it was a really good experience. Really quick yeah. shoot, but it came together really nicely. And um, you know, the end result uh, got a lot of looks, but you know, sadly, it didn't didn't get picked up anywhere. But people who watch it really enjoy it. Sure. Definitely, and you had some. You had a great cast in there. You had uh, Richard Reilly from. Uh, you guys might know from Office Space. He was the paranoid worker there, and a few other good actors. Yeah, we we got uh, Richard is fantastic. He's been in a number of my projects uh, throughout the years. Um, Maury Sterling, um, who who played the the head of the rehab facility, uh, the quirky the quirky. Uh, I guess you would say uh, manager. Mm-hmm. of the place um and and he <laughs> has since gone on to be on homeland um extant um and uh, tons of movies he was in smoke and aces um mm-hmm. outbreak actually um but uh he's great um evan arnold plays uh ass boy in the pilot and uh he just recently uh did a did a great turn on uh mad men, on mad men mm-hmm. um and uh, and then uh, Josh McDermott, who came in, he he played a really small part in the pilot, but we had big plans for that role in the series. And uh, he's now one of the stars of The Walking Dead. So, oh, uh, yeah. So we um, it it we had a really great cast for, definitely for that pilot. Very nice, very nice. Uh, and you have a you've worked in a few series here, uh, one of which is Bedlam. That was a um, actually a uh, a web series that we were doing uh, for Gossipia Media, um, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, that was a really fun shoot again with Maury Sterling and uh, at the time Alexis Boozer, um, who is now Alexis Boozer Sterling. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> they got uh, they got married last year. Congratulations to them. They're fantastic people. Okay. Um, and that that was a really fun shoot to do. It was about a, a woman. Uh, waking up in the wreckage of a car, not knowing how she got there, and through the process of trying to figure out how to get out of her situation, she starts to remember back uh, to the night before. And um, as she starts getting her memory back, we realize that she is a special agent, and um, people are are, uh, after her for what she knows. Nice. Excellent. So tell me, as far as being a director, a writer, and... And working on the set, I mean, it seems like you've done it all at this point. Have you done any acting? Uh, in college, I did some acting. Um, okay. Not, not anymore. I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't necessarily uh, in, enjoy being in front of the camera that much. Um, mm-hmm. Interviews are great, uh, but, you know, ask me to memorize lines and I, I freeze. So. Definitely. <laughs> I, I hear you. That's why I don't write any lines, but when I do... Whew, well, it's the power of the editor that's really the, at work here. It's, it's not myself, not at this time of night. Um, <laughs> tell me, what is the, your proudest work so far? I'm really proud of uh, the, the short film that I did a couple years ago called The Frolic. Um, that came out um, really well. It played at Cannes and a ton of other um, genre uh, horror film festivals. Um, nice. And uh, is now available on DVD. Um, so right. that that was a really great experience. Um, I worked with some really great people in that, um, and uh, horror writer Tom Ligotti, um, who wrote the original short story, um, came on and co-wrote the script with Brandon Trends. And having him involved throughout the entire process was was invaluable because you know he he wrote the short story, and and um, you know if I needed some kind of clarification or 
just uh, somebody right. to, to bounce an idea off of. It was fantastic to have him there. Oh, absolutely. That's great. Yeah, he's right there. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, and then I just started shooting or, or just finished shooting um, a movie called Blue Line um, starring Tom Sizemore, Jordan Ladd, and Kevin Nash. Uh, shot that in January, February. Um, and uh, so far, we're, we're in post, and so far the movie is coming okay. together really well. So um, Excellent. When it's all said and done, I'll be... I'll be proud of proud of this movie and what we did, and and uh, especially considering the time frame and the conditions that we we shot it in, mm-hmm. it, we came up with a lot of really great stuff. Uh, where did you shoot that? Uh, we shot that up, up in uh, northern Connecticut um, in January and February of this year, and uh, just so happened we we plopped the schedule right in the middle of a couple snowstorms and uh, below zero temperatures, and and it was just. Uh, it was just crazy all the way around. Yeah. It was a crazy shoot. Wow. Where will we be able to see that once it's out? That will be uh, coming out uh, beginning of 2016. Um, most likely a video on demand, uh, iTunes, Netflix, um, Redbox. Um, cool. If uh, Depending on the sales situation, maybe we can get a limited theatrical uh, in the foreign markets. Um, but definitely uh, video on demand iTunes, DVD, Blu-ray. Netflix, Excellent. Okay. Kind of stuff. Great. We'll keep an eye out for that. All right. And uh, also, you have another movie we'll be working in, and this movie is supported by Indiegogo Project. This is a movie that is has the feeling, well, it's not just the feeling and the style, but it's all the story surrounded with the 80s type of theme called Pitching Tents. It's, it's a coming-of-age comedy. Uh, it's about a, a young man who um, is graduating high school and he's trying to figure out his future and he's stuck in the middle uh, between um, you know his hard nosed dad who who thinks he should uh, you know get a job at the local factory something that's steady um, and then um, he's in a tug of war with with his dad and then also with uh, with his uh, kind of crackpot counselor guidance counselor who thinks he should go to college. Um, and it's really just about him trying to figure out what he's going to do with his life, if he should follow in his dad's footsteps or fo- uh, follow his dream of being an artist. Um, and it's all set around this one weekend uh, called Trout Camp, where, where all the teens go out to the woods and, and they party and have fun. And during that experience, um, our lead Danny um, finds himself in this um, this goddess camp. There's this... Uh, this urban legend about this this hidden camp where all these college girls mm. uh, go and camp during trout weekend and you know <laughs> nobody's been able to find it ever in all the years of trout camp and he manages to stumble upon it uh, after knocking himself out running from the cops and uh, and uh, in that process he meets a girl who points him in the right direction and ultimately gives him the the uh, the confidence to go after where, what he really wants. Excellent. I've, sa- I've said it myself, and the people that have created this, they're going after creating an 80s movie because we just don't see that feeling in cinema anymore, and I totally agree with that. I, I definitely want to see that, that fun we had in the 80s, and, and even the, the youthful slash adult um, acting and scripts you saw in 80s movies, which you don't see anymore. Now it's either like children acting as children in movies or adults as adults you don't see that nice cross that you had in the 80s type movies no you don't um that's that's definitely what we're going for we want you know uh pitching tents is kind of in the vein of uh, the way way back meets all of the john hughes films from the 80s it's it's really well written it's great script great story with a lot of heart and uh, we, we want to bring that back, you know, explosions and horror films <laughs> and everything in between are fantastic. Um, but we really want to bring something, you know, to the table that, that uh, people of all ages can watch and, and uh, you know, enjoy yeah. um, and, and be kind of transported back to, to that time in their lives or think about what is going to be happening in their lives in the future Mm-hmm. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we can, um, you know, help some people, you know, make those decisions that that are really tough, uh, especially for teenagers mm-hmm. when when uh, 
you know, the future is unknown. Yeah, great. That movie and the whole idea of it was brought up by Meritage Pictures. What's your affiliation? Yeah, well, um, uh, Rob Fox and uh, Jamie Petrilli uh, wrote the script. Um, Jane Kosek, uh, the producer of the of the of the movie and uh, owner of Meritage Pictures, um, gave me a call and talked to me about the project and. And uh, we have worked together um, on two other projects. Uh, the first feature I directed, titled uh, Fierce Friend, and then she also produced The Frolic um, mm -hmm. with me. So um, we, we have a great uh, working relationship, and we're also really great friends. Um, so when she brought it to me, I, I read it, loved the script. Um, and because we have such a really good working relationship, I, you know, we definitely wanted to be involved. Sure. Awesome. Okay, excellent. Well, you know, I, I work with a lot of uh, youth these days, and this is definitely something I'd want them to see. Like you said, I, it could help out, you know, the teens. And definitely the, one of the hardest parts, if not the hardest part of your life and all of our life, is teenagehood, being an adolescent. So I think that'd be really cool for them to see movies like this being out in the new light, but with that you know, 80s kind of feel and kind of lesson to it. That'd be excellent. And then, with, you know, for the adults as well, you know, supporting and seeing that and kind of being taken back to those days. Right. The The 80s was a, it's a really fun era, um, specifically 1984, where the, where the film is set. Um, a lot of things changed uh, out that year. You know, music, mm -hmm. you know, became the new wave type of style that we all know and kind of, think about when we when we remember the 80s or sure. research the 80s um you know a lot of fashion stuff came out that year like i said right. music um and then 80s too in general movies in the 80s mm -hmm. I mean, the so many iconic movies were released during that era and um and we really just want to explore that and have fun with it and and bring that that feeling back sure john hughes movies were were had had great stories were really funny um and great characters and that's what pitching tense has definitely awesome um yeah the 80s were definitely like a, a kind of free flow of art you know as it seems uh, everything now or after the 90s seems so sold out you know in movies and art itself in music uh the 80s was was kind of that time where where people were over experimentation and now they were, you know, ready to f be free and kind of express everything. And uh, yeah, great times. What can we do to help? We're exploring multiple areas um, to get the funding for this movie, one of which is uh, the Indiegogo campaign. Um, and the biggest thing is, you know, independent film is, is, is uh, a hard road and we need all the help we can get to make this happen. Um, every penny counts, and like they say, it takes a village to to make a make a movie. Um, so any Definitely. support we can have uh, on the Indiegogo would be amazing. Um, spreading the word, uh, contributing, even if it's five dollars, ten dollars, um, it all helps. And we have sure. a lot of really great perks. Um, we have uh, you know like beer and soda koozies, T-shirts, hats, um, trips to the premiere. Um, trips to set. Uh, we have a mentorship program. So nice. if um, somebody you know has a cousin, a young cousin, or a young daughter or son, who or a nephew um, who wants to get into film, mm -hmm. check out that perk, and and you know we would love to have them to come out on set and uh, learn by experience. Nice. Um, that is that's great. The, that's the best way to best way to do it. That's how I. That's how uh, I, I learned the most was by actually, you know, making films and working on productions, um, you know, and that's, that's kind of, you know, the best way to go about it. Books, books are fantastic. Theory is great. But until you can actually put that into action, um, sure, you know, the, that, that stuff is invaluable. Yeah. I always say, yeah, if you got an opportunity like this, that's the great thing about these Indiegogo and Kickstarter type projects is, uh, you know, if you got the opportunity to spend a little bit of money and be in the movie and get that experience and maybe meet someone that could really help you out in the future, you know, definitely go for it. If, or if you know someone that would like that, definitely spread the word. Uh, a project such as this, what, what total budget are we looking at? 
Uh, for this one, um, we're looking at in between uh, 120 and 200. Very low budget, um, very down and dirty, very indie. Right. Um, <laughs> and that's uh, that's what we're reaching for. Okay. Um, yeah, and the plan for the film, um, along with uh, your 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 normal releases, you know, the VOD, the Netflix, the iTunes. Um, you know, we also want to want to make a festival run with this piece and and really spread the word that way. And, sure. And uh, have people watch it, um, you know, on the big screen. Sure, definitely, definitely, yeah. Well, as you guys heard, go check that page out. It'll be located down below. I'll remind you again at the end of this show, that's the Indiegogo for Pitching Tents. And help out in any way you can. If you don't have money, hey, it's all right. Share it. Sure, let, put it on your Facebook page. Put it on your Twitter. Let people know about it because there's a lot of people interested in this and they can definitely use the support, even just vocal support. So get out there and check it out. And remember, folks, if you are watching this video after the Pitching Tents Indiegogo campaign has already finished, no problem. You can still pitch and you can still help out and get wonderful perks back. Just be sure to contact the creators either on the Indiegogo page itself uh, by messaging them there. Or you can also find them on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash pitching tense movie. Again, that's facebook.com slash pitching tense movie. And you can go ahead and mess message the creators there and let them know how much you're willing to help out with. And they will be fine. They said it's okay to continue the perks even after the campaign is done. So if you want to get a t-shirt, if you want to get the movie earlier, whatever you want to get, it's still available even if the Indiegogo uh, campaign itself is finished. This is flex flexible funding, meaning this movie is going to get done. It's going to happen. <laughs> 80s style, baby, all the way. Uh, okay, now check up. What would you say, back to you now, what would be your dream project? Uh, there's a number, that I ha a number of projects that I have written right now that I would love to make. I don't don't necessarily have a dream project per se, but there are, there are a few that I would love to do. It's I have a, a film called uh, Grime, which is a, a psychological mm -hmm. a horror film, um, and it's uh, it, it has to do with PTSD um, and and uh, the after effects of going to war. Mm -hmm. um, it also has undertones of addiction. I feel like it's a film that that needs to be made not only because it, it, it deals with stuff that's happening today in our culture, but um, mm -hmm. it's just a really interesting take on on kind of that genre. Um, it's in the vein of Jacob's Ladder um, and, and other uh, psychological horror films uh, in that vein. Um, would love to do that one. Um, and then I just uh, optioned a movie called Farewell to the Night, which is a supernatural drama. Um, mm. being a future dad, um, the script is, uh, is just something that, that hits close to home and, and something I'd love to make. It's very sure. visual, um, and it's a great story and I'd, I'd really love to, uh, to dive into that and, uh, make that one happen, you know, relatively Okay. Soon. Okay. Excellent. Tell me, Jacob, what is your favorite genre of movies? Uh, for example, science fiction, we could drama, action. What do you like the most? Uh, well, I, I really enjoy writing and, and directing uh, the darker material, uh, horror, thriller, uh, action's always great. Um, for, for the little films, you know, I always have a hankering for comedy okay. and, uh, and drama. Um, when it comes to drama, um, I always, I don't know why, but I always tend to add in like a supernatural kind of flair to it. Um, so... You know, in general, just I, I like the quirkier, darker uh, material. Um, and if I'm doing something that is a straight up drama, you know, something like Farewell Tonight interests me the most because uh, it's got those supernatural elements, um, kind of like always and what dreams may come um, in those style of movies. Um, but but ultimately, I you know, no matter what genre it is, the material has to speak to me. Um, and it's got to mm -hmm. have heart and, um, you know, I, I, I would love to be able to have a, a filmmaking career where I can 
do any genre I want and uh, not kind of be pigeonholed into one thing. Um, so far, Definitely. I've been able to do that. Uh, I've done comedies, I've done dramas, I've done action films, I've done horror films, and um, nice. I love them all. Um, and I'd love to, I'd love to keep doing that. You did say you you haven't done any acting. You don't really look onto doing that in the future. But you know, like like Stanley, for example, in his uh, Marvel movies, would you be willing as director and producer to so kind of show your face a little bit in the movie here and there? Probably not. Um, I prefer to be behind <laughs> the camera. Um, okay. Some cameos, maybe at some point, if I feel like it's right, but. But I don't want to um, make it something that has to happen every time. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, let's go into your kind of personal likes here. Tell me what your favorite series is. Breaking Bad was my favorite series. <laughs> um, Excellent. I really love that show. Uh, Walking Dead's great. Um, sure. And uh, really enjoying House of Cards. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, but ultimately, you know, Mad Men's great too. But I think uh, as an overall series, my favorite. Uh, and then you got Game of Thrones. It's going to be a tie between Breaking mm. Bad and Game of Thrones. Mm, nice. All right. Uh, no, definitely uh, great writing there uh, with Breaking Bad as well. What I I'm glad you mentioned uh, Walking Dead because uh, when I first went into watching that and getting into that, you know, I was just thinking, oh, it's a zombie thing. Uh, it's just going to be, you know, more what forced on the the action and the brutality of it but but what really kind of surprised me is how it goes into the psychological level and the characters and that's what really kind of impressed me with that series yeah yeah it's um it's a lot more than just uh people running away from zombies um there's a lot of the inner turmoil that happens with the sure. survivors and and uh you know who to trust and who who not to trust. Yeah, um, it's very psychological. They they took a great advantage of that and you know went into uh, things like morals and ethics and you know what what would you? I always like to to watch that and think you know what would I do that in that situation and which situation would be the best and it's actually it gets pretty difficult and that's why I think what makes you know quality writing in the series as well. Right, exactly, exactly. There's there's a lot to grab onto and a lot to explore, so it's um, it, that's what makes it interesting. Great. Uh, I haven't gotten too deep into Game of Thrones yet. Yeah. We've seen the uh, uh, Breaking Bad, uh, yeah. but uh, I did see the first and maybe second episode of Game of Thrones, and now I'm getting ready to kind of jump into that deeper. So, uh, yeah, what would you say about that? Um, I would say uh, just keep watching. All right. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of twists and turns. There's a lot of uh, a lot of <laughs> things that happen that uh, that that will probably make you mad, um, but in mm -hmm. a good way. Um, Ooh, they, I like that. They definitely like to keep you on your toes and and do the unexpected. So um, uh, excellent. You know, just just keep on watching. Excellent. Yeah, as a series, it definitely it's it's something new. It's something uh, quite a bit different compared to the other stuff out there. So. Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, tell me, tell me, what's your favorite uh, film? Your favorite movie? Or uh, your top three? Let's say top three. Um, Shawshank Redemption. Okay. Um, Not a point. I love. I uh, really love the Descent, uh, the horror film. Um, it's like a mm -hmm. exploration and atmospheric tension. It's it's really great. Great film. Neil Marshall's fantastic. Um, and. For some reason, I really, I really enjoy Singing in the Rain. Complete departure from the other two films, but Singing in the Rain, I, I really enjoyed watching when I was, uh, when I was a kid, and uh, right. still enjoy it. Great. So let's jump into a little bit uh, of a different one, but still in the same kind of field. Your favorite cartoon. You have to have a favorite cartoon oh, out there. I like, I like uh, Wile E. Coyote and the Roadrunner. All right, so you're into um, the classics. Yeah. I like the classics um, and, uh, you know, more contemporary stuff. Um, my wife works at Blue Sky Animation. Okay. So she does the Rio movies and uh, the Ice Age movies. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the, the new Peanuts movie is coming out. So I'm excited mm. for that. Wow. Um, I've seen pieces and it's uh, going to look pretty cool. Very nice. Um, and then I really, really enjoy the Lego movie. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Yes, I, I've seen good things about it, though. Hmm. 
All right. Yes. Uh, the new Peanuts movie, is that going to be done in the CGI or cartoon? Uh, it's uh, CGI, um, but done in the classic feel. So it's mm. still, you know, contemporary animation. Right. Um, but but in the style of the original. Oh, so it's nice. um, it's really cool. Excellent. Very nice. Cool. All right. So tell me, Jacob, what is next for you and your work? Uh, well, after uh, pitching tents, um, I'm I'm slated to uh, write and direct a, a zombie film um, out in L.A. Okay. So uh, I'll probably be heading out there. Beautiful. Um, late August, early September. Great. Um, and, uh, I have a couple other projects in development. Um, I have a horror film titled The Banishing that, uh, I'm hoping to get going really soon. Um, Grime, uh, has an option out with a, a set of producers as does Farewell to the Night. So, Wonderful. um, it's really all, all about seeing, uh, where things land, um, and, and what kind of new stuff comes around the bend. Sure. Awesome. Hey, we're always welcome to zombie movies and such here. We love that kind of stuff here at the Kadawa Show. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's weird for me to say such a thing for an entire show, but hey, it's called the Kadawa Show. I can say it. I like zombies. And if I want to interview a zombie, I can. So, Jacob, if you find any zombies out there, right. or let's say actors that have zombie makeup on, <laughs> bring them on over right. here. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to them, especially for, what, Halloween? Huh? We can do it any time here, but Halloween, yeah, yeah, we can do it any time. I think um, uh, in this uh, zombie film, one of the the actors is mm -hmm. uh, he does the voice of uh, Wesker on the Resident in the Resident Evil okay. uh, video games. There you go. So uh, I'm sure he would love to do love to do the show in in zombie makeup at, at some point. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Networking right here, right in yeah. front of you guys. Look at that. <laughs> it's not even behind the scenes. Look at that. That's beautiful. That'd be awesome. Definitely. Uh, especially since a lot of the crowd here on YouTube are gamers. So that would be a wonderful thing. Right. Okay. Now for you. I'm going to give you my 10 speed questions. Okay. So just okay. answer these uh, kind of intuitively as fast as you can. Are you ready? Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, number one. What inspires you? Uh, s stories uh, that that uh, that tell tell the the human experience and and really resonate with uh, within myself. Okay, there you go. It's nice because I got you all hyped up now. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. Okay, that was good. I like that. Uh, next one. What is your favorite word? Uh. I do that a lot. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, See, I, I was thinking I just hyped you up so you were saying a lot of uhs because you were in the moment. But yeah. maybe, See, that's just your favorite word. Yeah. That's, yeah. My favorite that word works. right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's my favorite word on a lot of shows. Luckily, my editing doesn't show that through, so I'm trying to get better at that. It's funny because, I, you know, you teach people and students... Uh, you know, don't say us. We even count that in class. Even when I went to college, we had to count how many times we say an uh, you know, during a speech. Right. But it's just so, it's just so friendly. It's, Instead of being awkwardly quiet, saying an uh, it still keeps you connected yeah, with the fills, person, it feels. It fills the gap and it, it shows that you're thinking. <laughs> there you go. Hmm. I might, yeah, maybe, maybe us will become a big thing here on the show. Yeah. Who knows? It's, <laughs> it's so young here. All right, next one. What would you love to be if you could be in any profession and you already have the certification for it and the knowledge and something other than what you're doing now? Fireman. Fireman. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. That was, okay. my plan. that was my plan B. That's your plan B. That yeah, was. Okay. It was. My wife Excellent. won't let me do that anymore, so I have to come up with a new one. <laughs> <laughs> any thoughts on a fireman movie? Um... I wrote a movie called Age of Tomorrow that premiered on the Sci-Fi Channel last year. It was a uh, mm -hmm. fireman versus aliens, pretty much. Um, <laughs> cool. Which uh, it's a it's, it was a really cool concept, um, fun movie, and um, mm -hmm. you know I would love to do a, a movie about uh, firemen. Either it'd be a comedy or a straight kind of action drama at some point. Um, sure. I wrote a wrote a. A television pilot a couple of years back about fire investigators, which was really fun to do and really fun to 
to uh, research and, and uh, dive into. Um, so I definitely have an interest in, in that and, and have had an interest in that uh, for a really long time. So at sure. some point, a fireman, fireman movie will happen. Okay, great. I like how uh, with your movie ideas, you are really going out there and going with something new and mixing up things and really, you know, being creative with it. Not so uh, mundane like a, a lot of other big time and small di- time directors and producers out there. So big props to that. Well, oh, thanks. All right, continuing here. What grosses you out? Vomit. <laughs> okay, all right. I would expect that answer more often, but <laughs> funny enough, we don't get it. Uh, all right. What do you love to hear in the morning after you wake up and at night before you go to bed? Uh, or to sleep. My wife saying, I love you. There you go. At both times? Both times. Okay. If, if she doesn't Excellent. say it, that means I'm probably in trouble. <laughs> So. Right. So then you have to say it first. Yes. And maybe last. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Depends. So, well, leading to the next question from there, what scares you? I have a fear of drowning. So the thought of drowning drowning, um, okay. scares me. Hmm. Uh, are, you, are you much of a water person? Do you like to go swimming, things like that? Uh, I do go swimming occasionally, but it's not something I have to do. Okay, I see. You're a very elemental-based person, it seems. I mean, uh, firefighter, fighting fire with water, but then too much water is also a negative, so very interesting there. (laughs) Right, right. Yeah, I didn't realize that. That's a good point. (laughs) Interesting things come out here in this silliness of this moment. Uh, Let's see. What animal would you love to be if you could choose to be any animal? Hmm... Probably a dog. Okay. Any specific breed, since they're you know, um, so different? Probably a golden retriever. They're just really beautiful dogs who, who uh, are really good people, pe- people animals. Right. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, just, I, I, I like that, that breed in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, probably something to do with uh, my... My family has had a couple golden retrievers throughout the years. So. I see. Yeah, they they have such a positive nature as dogs. Yeah. Some people would say they all do, but uh, well, I think particularly golden retrievers are known for that, for that kind of characteristic in them and just the sort of uh, kindness they even have as an animal. Right. <clears throat> um, okay, where would you love to live if you could live anywhere in the world? Bellagio, Italy. Uh, it's right on Lake Como. Beautiful village. Uh, my wife and I um, made that our last stop on our honeymoon, and we fell in love. Oh, um, nice. that's like our our dream place to be. So if we have a bad day, we we think about Bellagio, Italy, and everything seems to be okay. Nice. Let me see here. Uh, what excites you the most? Fun in general. Um, just uh, uh, let's see. It's a good question. Um, a lot of things excite yeah. me, um, but just you know, being able, having having time to just hang out with friends and family, and you know, have a have a cold beer in the backyard like that that excites excites me. Right. Okay. Good. Just good old times. Yeah. Okay. And the last one out of those questions: uh, What superhuman ability would you choose if you had to choose one? Hmm. Invisibility. Maybe. Okay. Uh, just because you can, you can go places and do things that that uh, you know you really want to, but no, you you shouldn't, and uh, it's not a problem when nobody can see you. All right, all right, yeah, true, true. Um, even traveling, yeah, you can travel at no expense. That's uh, I didn't think about that part yeah. of it too. Yeah, hmm, not bad, yeah, not, not bad. Yeah, I w- it was that or um, like Hulk strength, <laughs> but. I don't really know what I would do with Hulk strength. I don't right. want to like break walls all the time. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I, I agree because we're trying to think of it as in a positive aspect here. I mean, when anybody says invisibility, you can do a lot of naughty things with that. But obviously, we're to 
good men here and we're trying to put it in positive light and when you said invisibility you know I had to quickly think of hmm, what kind of positive <laughs> right. things could I do with right. that well, not, uh, not looking at not looking at it in a naughty way it's more just like you can you can do things and do whatever mm -hmm. you want to do with with no with no pushback yeah basically definitely me as a Mostly, I, I don't believe I'm completely an introvert or an extrovert, but um, I think a large part of me is an introvert. And as an introvert, I think that that's a great answer. You know, you can, you can just go off wherever and just kind of sit down. Nobody can see you have that moment to yourself right. pretty much whenever you want. Exactly. Tell me, what is your kind of follower, your friends, fans? What, uh, what is the most asked question you get? It's usually, um, what are you working on? That's basically it, because I, I always have a lot of things mm. in the in the hopper, and that's good. Um, yeah, it's usually you know what are you sure. working on now? Um, yeah, that's usually it. Awesome. I wish it was a cooler. I wish it was a cooler question, like you know, when's the when's the next? You know, what's the next country you're gonna visit? <laughs> or you know, you know <laughs> sure. Well, yeah, maybe that'll come later. What's the when are you gonna go hang out with Leonardo DiCaprio on his yacht? You know, but no, it's really, <laughs> what are you working on? Well, I like that one. That means people respect you for who you are and what you do, and they're actually curious yeah. about it. So mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Uh, in your field, what advice would you give beginners? Uh, always be creating. Always shoot something. Always write something. Um, you know, even if it's a miserable failure, you, you, you did it, and you experienced it, and you can take that experience and use it to the, uh, on the next one, either good or bad. There you go. Great. Excellent. Um, let's see, I noticed you have a, a couple channels, or even more, there on YouTube. Uh, one is, uh, what, Mr. J. Cooney, and another one is Jacob Cooney. Is mm. there a specific one, or both, maybe, that um, uh, we can direct people to? Probably uh, Jacob Cooney. Um, is the most recent one. I, uh, there's one that I had earlier and I didn't touch it for a while and YouTube mm -hmm. went, went on and deleted all my videos. So I just started a new one. Wow. That's YouTube for you. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. So we'll definitely link that below. Check it out, guys. He's got Indiegogo Her updates going on there as well. And, uh, probably your other projects, um, as they come, right? Yeah. Yeah. They got, uh, that stuff. Um, a lot of my, my projects, um, are, they're on my website, uh, jacobcooney.com. You can see all of, all of my projects or That's trailers right. of those projects, um, on my mm -hmm. website. That's right. Yep. So yeah, check out his website and check out his IMDB too, which, you know, that all correlates and his YouTube channel. And Jacob, what uh, message would you like to leave your followers, fans, and friends with tonight? Um, well, I mean, in a general note, um, just just keep loving film, keep keep loving uh, storytelling and storytellers. Um, and and if this is something you want to do, just go do it. Um, more specific, yeah. um, help us make. Uh, excuse me, <clears throat> help us make pitching tents. Go visit the Indiegogo page. Uh, visit my website, visit uh, the Pitching Tents Facebook page, uh, check it out, get updates, tell everybody, contribute. Um, like I said earlier, independent filmmaking is a, is a team sport and uh, yep. everything helps. Um, if it's not, if it's not uh, cold hard cash, then tell your friends and family, spread the word, um, just Definitely. help us get the word out and uh, help us make this awesome movie. There you have it, guys. So, like he said, don't procrastinate. Don't procrastinate in life. Go and get those things done that you want to, and support independent filmmaking such as pitching tents. These projects require a lot of team effort, as he said. They require funding, as you know. Movies are expensive. You have to pay a lot of people. You have to pay a lot of work that goes into creating the movie. So, do support these works of art. Because this is what will keep pushing the genre and movie making to the future. It's all these, uh, well, independent producers and such. So, do check out Jacob's channel. It will be listed down below. And his website, Sam the DB. And definitely go drop by the Indiegogo page for Pitching Tents. See what you can do. 
definitely the first thing you should do is get on your other social media media post that link out there maybe shoot some words uh, specific to the to the, the the movie they're creating such as you know a great 80s flick back in you know to the creation of now it's again remember these aren't donations when you send something to indiegogo you get something in return how much for the movie jacob Oh, for a digital download? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the digital download is either $50 uh, con contribution or okay. maybe a $25. Um, it's in that range there. It's not, it's not a ton of money to get a, get a digital download. So in the meantime, while they use that money to support the movie and create it, you will get that digital download and you'll be the first to get that movie. So that's the great thing about supporting projects like this early. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode with this wonderful man and his wonderful work. And he's only going to be creating more and more, so it will be really fun to watch what he does next. If you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see Jacob back in the near future, do let us know down below. Mr. Cooney, I would like to give you my digital handshake now. All right. Alrighty, guys, you've seen it all now, so have a great day or night, wherever you are. All right. Thanks, everybody, and uh, really appreciate you taking the time and watching this video and uh, help uh, promote Arthur's show. Get the Kadawa show out there. Ooh. What a sweet man. Help support Jacob back and the Kickstarter and pitching tents. All right. Goodbye, guys. Subscribe and comment down below, and maybe you can be on our next show. Be sure to check out Arthur Kadawa's gameplays, monsters, and other work. For this program as well, so anytime you want to be featured, uh, just let me know. So if there's a great YouTuber that you want to see interviewed, and if you know some questions you want to ask them, let us know who it is and what questions you have. And again, if you're a YouTuber and you want some more viewers and more subscribers and more fans to meet you and find out about you, this is a great chance for you. It's a great opportunity.